In my homeland, we have a saying. Yeah, we got one too. The PS triple. I ain't talking about that week. You gotta love Grand Theft Auto 4. That was the first GTA where we had a story packed with emotion and themes such as immigration and family. The first GTA to feature graphics this good on the home console. The first GTA where you could see the main character and NPCs realistically flopping around thanks to the new physics. This game was groundbreaking for its time, and in 2008, it was one of the top sellers on the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC platforms. But did you know that this cross-platform game was possibly originally intended to be limited to a single console? If industry analyst Michael Pachter is to be believed, then GTA 4 was originally planned to be exclusive to the PlayStation 3. Now, if you know who Michael Pachter is already, you'll know that he's not right about everything. He's an industry analyst, not an employee of any one game company. But unless he's just pulling this information out of his ass, he really doesn't say it's an analysis. He talks about it as though he actually has some insider information on this. So just hear me out on this one. In May of 2010, Eurogamer interviewed Michael Pachter in a three-page piece called Being Michael Pachter, detailing things like his job and the analyses he makes. At one point, the journalist for Eurogamer asks him what happened with The Agent, referring to that game that's still coming soon to PlayStation 3, rating pending. Pachter said, When Microsoft paid Take-Two to make GTA 4 non-exclusive, in other words, GTA 4 was going to be a PS3 exclusive, but Microsoft paid Rockstar and Take-Two to make it a non-exclusive, and they paid them a lot. The number I've heard, and I'm sure this is right, is $75 million. And that probably includes funding for the first DLC packs, too. It's more than the $50 million that people talk about. This article was from May 12th, 2010, and I'm still amazed, actually, that I didn't know about about this until now. He doesn't just say, oh, it's my guess that this is what they did. He straight up says that they paid Rockstar to make GTA 4 non-exclusive. So who knows who his source is on this, but provided that his source on this claim is correct, then that means that when GTA 4's development began in late 2004, Rockstar probably had the intention of developing the game solely for the PlayStation 3. Which makes sense in a way, since every other GTA released before then had strong ties to PlayStation. GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, all of those were originally PS2 exclusives before they eventually made their way to the Xbox and PC. And then the Stories games never even left the PlayStation platforms. They they were exclusive to the PSP and PS2. Obviously, Rockstar planned on continuing this tradition and keeping GTA on the PlayStation for at least a little while. But money talks. I mean, let's face it, if you're a game company and some huge corporation offers you $75 million to make the game for their platform as well as the one you originally planned to make it for, you're probably gonna do it. This decision had to have been made before E3 2006 because it was at the Microsoft conference that GTA 4 was announced as being multi-platform, with exclusive DLC for the 360. While Episodes from Liberty City did eventually make its way to the PS3 and PC, for a while, the only on Xbox stamp on the front case did actually makes sense. Now let me cover those of you who like to ask, what if? What if Microsoft didn't offer $75 million to bring GTA 4 to their console? Or what if Take-Two and Rockstar actually turned down the money? I'm sure a lot of people who were already hardcore GTA fans would have gone and bought PS3s if they didn't already own them. Xbox owners who were interested would probably have to wait a while because I feel like maybe they would have eventually released the game on the 360. It would have been like the 3D era games, where their release on the Xbox would have taken a little longer. Unless, of course, the game was such a phenomenal success in the PS3 alone that Sony would have outright bought Rockstar Games or its parent company Take-Two Interactive, and Rockstar would essentially become part of the SIE World Studios, joining Naughty Dog, Bend Studio, Santa Monica Studio. Of course, this would mean that every game by Rockstar after 2008 would be a PlayStation exclusive. There actually were rumors of this last year, and they were quickly shot down by Sony, but it was nonetheless interesting interesting to think of, and I wondered how a Rockstar under Sony would look. I also don't think that just because they would have had one console to develop on initially instead of two would have made them make the projected release of October 2007 either. Rockstar tends to delay their titles a lot, and Pachter even said a day after the delay was announced that he thought that Rockstar probably didn't realize how difficult developing the game would have been for the PS3. Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick later did cite technical difficulties with both the PS3 and the 360 as being part of the reason for the delay. The PS3 especially was notorious among game developers for being very difficult to develop on. It had something to do with its cell processor. One of the makers of Gran Turismo even said the PS3 was a nightmare to develop on. And if you remember GTA 4's delay and thought the extra six months we had to wait back then were painful, Gran Turismo 5 was delayed for four years. 
This is part of why the PS4 now uses the x86 processor. It's a lot more conventional and obviously not as difficult to work with. So if we go by all of this, if GTA 4 was originally meant to be a PS3 exclusive and Rockstar essentially broke that deal when they took the money from Microsoft, this did mean that at the time Rockstar had to deliver something else to Sony that would have been exclusive. For now, what do you think of how GTA 4 was almost a PS3 exclusive? Do you think the game would have been as much of a success in the PS3 alone, or would the sales figures maybe be a little lower due to its exclusivity? Would the game have eventually been released on the 360, or would Sony acquire Rockstar and ensure that such a thing would have no chance of happening? And if you were a 360 owner back in the late 2000s, would you have bought a PS3 for GTA 4? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.